Howdy, chaplains and visitors. Appreciate you tuning in with us uh, uh, this afternoon. And uh, uh, God bless you and God bless your desire to seek and serve him. And uh, I appreciate you. I'm Dave Harvey, president of Cowboys for Christ. And we're going to go over a little bit of uh, uh, information and uh, uh, guidelines on our prison ministry. Cowboys for Christ has a long, long, long history in prison ministry. Our very first vice president, Jack Favor was the world champion bulldogger and spent seven and a half years at Angola Prison in Louisiana, totally innocent. He started the very first prison uh, Bible study. He started the very first uh, prison rodeo, which actually is still continuing today, all inmate rodeo. And uh, so we go way back and uh, uh, we appreciate you here and hopefully you can get some good guidelines and and. Uh, if you're interested in the jail or prison ministry, uh, please uh, tune in and get some points and go do it. If you're going to do it, do it right because you're serving the master. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Father, we thank you for your perfect love, your perfect grace, and your perfect mercy. And Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross that we might live and live eternally. And Lord, we seek to serve you. We seek to do it in the way you would have us to do it. We seek to, seek to touch lives for you, Lord, and we seek that your precious will be done. We seek that the Holy Spirit would fill us overflowing. We seek that your anointing will be upon us, that we would go forth with power, serving you, touching lives for, for you and touching lives for the kingdom, because truly the kingdom of God is at hand, and we want to be vibrantly and powerfully and anointingly sharing that truth as we ride the trails of this life. Bless this time, Father God. May your good will be done. And we thank you and we praise you and we worship you for all your goodness and grace and mercy and love. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, glory. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about the Cowboys of Christ uh, prison ministry and what a wonderful work we do. We offer free Bibles and Bible studies uh, to prisoners and their children and family members when they can get their information. And we work uh, really hard on that. We got chaplains and chapters that focus completely on prison ministry or some that do a lot of it. And uh, so there's a lot of different avenues out there that needs to, to uh, be covered in the, in the prison ministry and the jail ministry. And what a wonderful work. We got some chaplains that are just touching many lives. And I'm hearing more and more about it. And we have some folks that are so interested in it that want to be a part of our chaplaincy program because that gives them a notch up. Suddenly, the, the prison officials and, and everybody know, hey, they're a Cowboys for Christ chaplain. And suddenly they are an ordained chaplain. And then they have that that uh, step taken that opens a door that they can go even even go deeper and, and more uh, effective in their prison ministry. And uh, so what a joy it is and, and what a wonderful uh, way to serve the Lord. And I've ministered in many prisons and I've always said this and I've always gotten a laugh. And uh, and but anyhow, it's a really neat to minister to a captive audience. So this is what you're doing. But you're also ministering to an audience, to a, to a group of folks that need help. They, they know they're on the bottom. They know they have no way to go but up. They know there is a massive problem. They know that they are, are, are done in many aspects of their lives. And they want help. They seek help. They need help. They desire help. And they need somebody to step forward and to provide that help and to provide that uh, 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 counseling they need, that that strength they need, uh, someone to pray for them, someone to talk with them, someone to minister to them, and someone to minister to their families, which is a, is a really, really uh, uh, element that is just lost by the wayside. Is, is touching the lives of these family members that are are they're really uh, going through the same terrible situations that their loved one is doing in, in the jails or prisons. And and the reason there are it reason they're there where they're at, it doesn't make any difference. The reason is they're a sinner just like you and me. That's the reason. Maybe they've done other things that's uh, uh, the courts caught up with them and they're now they're spending time, but they're still 
They're a sinner, just like me and you. So you remember that as you go minister to them. But also remember this. Uh, I just uh, heard from uh, Mrs. Uh, Banks uh, yesterday and, and, and Chaplain Banks, who was uh, Dr. Banks, was uh, a prison chaplain for many years in a couple of different states and longtime uh, uh, part of Cowboys for Christ. And, and, uh, but I heard that uh, just got the word yesterday from uh, his wife that he had gone to be with the Lord. So, uh, but uh, it's, uh, uh, but I ministered to many prisons. But Chaplain Banks told me, he said, Dave, remember. This is many years ago he told me this. He said, when you minister to these people, you remember they call them con men for a reason. Now, I'm not trying to be derogatory in any way, but I'm saying you minister the love of Jesus Christ and you have your focus on sharing the Lord Jesus Christ with them and don't get caught up in anything personal, anything personal. And I want to share this right now. This is number one, number one, a number one no-no. Listen to me, listen to me. As Dr. Banks would tell you, listen to him. And I listen to him. I'm not trying to be, because anybody, because those people need God's love. But listen to this. Number one, a big no-no. With every inmate or prisoner, prison or jail, do not give out your personal address, your email address, or any personal information. Listen to me. Do not give out any personal address, email address, or personal information. Many years ago, we had a wonderful prison team, ministry team. We made up, we, it was a wonderful team. We were traveling around to these uh, big federal prisons and doing ministry work, and it was great. One person in the ministry team gave her personal uh, address to this inmate. Well, I wanted to minister to him uh, during the, during the uh, off times, and one that we were going to write to each other and everything. Well, a couple years later, Brother Ted got a call from her at 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 in the morning. Said, he's on my back porch, what I do. What do you do then? Then that's, that's not ministry. When you, when you break that down there, then you started putting you in there and taking the Lord out. When you start putting you in there, you're not doing any good. You're, you're no good as a, as, a, as a ministry team member. You're no good. You're washed up. You're done. So don't do it. Don't do it. Don't ruin that because we lost our, our right. Cowboys of Christ lost the right to minister at that prison because of one infraction. We dissolved, We had to dissolve that whole ministry team because of one infraction. Don't do it. When you start putting personal in there, you're done. So remember that. They need help. They need Jesus Christ, and they don't need you in the way. They need you to be the, the instrument to bring Jesus Christ to them and to help them through these terrible situations they've gotten themselves into. And that's what we do. So listen to me. You heard that. No personal information. Cowboys for Christ has an address. It's a post office box address. If you are ministering or writing to a prisoner, you use a P.O. Box address or use our P.O. Box address. Uh, P.O. Box 7557, Fort Worth, Texas, 76111. We have had that post office box since 1976. So use it if you need it. Also, you give them the information, uh, uh, CFC mail at cowboysforchrist.org, and we'll handle everything. You personally cannot send a Bible and a Bible study to prisoner. It is not allowed. No prison, jail will accept it. It has to come from Cowboys for Christ. It has to come from the ministry. It cannot come from an individual. So don't try to send them because they're just going to send it back to you. So do it right. And this is the thing I want to, to emphasize greatly. Do it right. It's a wonderful ministry. You can change many lives. You can be a part of restoring lives. You can be a part of doing a wonderful work. These folks that are inmates, so many of them are there that they shouldn't be there. They're there because they're poor. They're there because they don't have any money. They're there because they didn't have... Uh, a uh, fair trial. They're there for a number of reasons. Some of them are there because they're guilty. Doesn't matter why they're there. They need Jesus Christ. Don't add to their problems. We want to help them solve their problems. We want to help them find the Lord. We want to help them uh, become successful in their walk in a uh, free, free world, which is not so free. And, and once they get out, and that's what our goal is. 
is to really help them and not hinder them. So no personal. You use uh, our Cowboys Race P.O. Box number and no other information should be given, none whatsoever, at any time under any circumstances. It's just not done. Okay. We have a bunch of chaplains that mention ministry in prisons and jails. It's a wonderful ministry. And you've you've got to go through the steps. Become, do it right. Find out what the requirements are. Go fulfill those requirements. One of the requirements is be an ordained chaplain. You're done. You You got the credentials. You got the credentials. So use them. And then get the other points. You got any other thing that needs to be done. Folks, we have inmates that are ordained chaplains with us. They are serving time and serving the Lord in, uh, behind the walls, they, inside the walls. They are, this is warden, warden approved, prison chaplain approved, and they are ordained chaplains. Some of them are even allowed to have their ID card and their belt buckle. Some of them even are allowed to wear cowboy boots as they go minister because the warden has seen, has sees the, the effect that these folks are having inside the walls and being, because they're one of them. I got a letter from a prisoner that said, you just don't know what your chaplain helps me out, what he means to me. I get 15 minutes once a week. He's on death row. He's on death row, folks. I get 15 minutes with him once a week. And you have no idea what this means to me. That's ministry work. The, The person that is going in there is another inmate. But he's a committed child of God, and he's going to do the Holy God's work. He's doing it in there to where we can't go. He can go. The warden has been approved him. He's a chaplain with Cowboys of Christ. Yeah, he can go because he's one. He's one of the inmates too. See, that's the point. So we do it right. We do it the right way, and then we go in and we do it God's way. That's the way we do it, and we touch lives for Jesus Christ. We send a Christian rancher. You know the Christian Rancher. Go on our website, view visitors, and uh, read the last 20 so issues. And that goes into prison. It's free. Sign up for it. Email your name and address. We'll put you on the mailing list. But we send them to prisons in probably at least 30 states and maybe every state in the union. I don't know. What difference does it make? We send as many as we can. And it's free to these prisoners. And I've had so many prisoners write. And we have so many testimonies in there from prisoners that have found the Lord through that little paper. They wouldn't read another thing else, but they started reading the Christian ranch and received the Lord through it. And now they're uh, uh, a child of God. And some of them are serving the Holy God through it. So that's, that's victories. That's the victories we want. That's the success stories that we want, uh, that we want to hear and we want to see and we want to realize. And that's what it's all about. Okay. Uh, uh, if you need to, if you have problem with an inmate, now sometimes we have that. Like Dr. Banks, I told you, Dr. Banks said they're con men. That doesn't mean they're bad. It doesn't mean they're mean they're in trouble and they're looking for ways out. And some of them are not working for the proper way to get out or to get out or, or, or get some help or get something, something that maybe some things they shouldn't have. And so, but, but what we want to do is work with them right. So if you have a problem and I had a chaplain call me up and said they had an inmate that kept bothering him and called two or three times a day. Some of them have phone privileges. Some of them can, if they got the money, they can spend the money and they'll do it. So uh, I said, I'll take care of it. Well, the chaplain, prison chaplain wasn't there that day. So I, I, I did the research and found out what it was. And it was a, a service that the inmates pay so much money and they can make so many calls. And so I called that company up that does it. And I gave him the phone number used, and she said, yeah, I see the log right here. He's made three calls to that call uh, just the other day. And I said, well, that's one of our chaplains. We need to stop. She said, it stopped right now. I will bar it. He won't be able to dial that number again. Took care of it. So same way, I've had to write a few prison chaplains and, 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 uh, or call them and then write them, send them a letter. Uh, and we, we get harassed, some of them. We're not here to be harassed. We're here to, to help you and help them through these these uh, severe issues that they have in their lives. And we want to help them, but we, we don't want to be harassed either. So, so that's where we, if we do things right, then we have the prison system behind us and we can go and do, do what needs to be done and touch lives for Jesus Christ. And that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're called to do. Uh, 
And uh, if if you're interested in prison ministry, give me a call. I will. Uh, I've had a number of little forms come send to me about uh, he needs this form signed by uh, their religious head as uh, uh, authorizing them to come to this jail minister. I I don't fill those out. I got a recommendation letter that I will send you the date of your ordination, the date of your time. Uh, you are an ordained chaplain of the Cowboys of Christ, I, and 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 uh, uh, I have that recommendation letter, and I send it right to you. And then you can take it right and hand it to them. And believe me, they would love to have that in your file, in their, in your file. But so much more than just that little card you fill out. So if you need help, let me know. We have uh, uh, most of the time you cannot take anything into a prison to minister. We have to mail it in. The county jails and local jails are a different story. And sometimes they will let you do it. We have some inmates that have been authorized to not only take Bibles and Bible studies into the prisons, and I mean, into the jails, but we have chaplains that have actually done baptisms inside the jails that have been authorized to do so because uh, they have been faithful. They've been dedicated. They have went in and done the job. And the whoever's the warden, the sheriff, uh, the jailer, whoever's responsible said, this is making a difference. They need to keep coming and I'm going to help them do their work. That's that's the point. That's what you're after. Yes. All of a sudden, they're on your team. All of a sudden, they're on your team. They will help you. They will do whatever you want to do. And you go in the love of the Lord. Now, remember, what do you do when you go? You be prayed up. You be stirred up. And you go do it. Be studied up. And go do the Lord's work. And if you need help, let me know. Give me a call. 817-236-0023. Dave at CowboysForChrist.org. Do the work of the Lord. Go out into these jails and prisons and touch lives for Jesus Christ. We got Bibles, Bible studies. We got Christian ranchmen. Whatever you need, we'll help you get going and we will help you do it. But you got to make that commitment. You got to step out in faith and do it. God bless you as you touch lives for Jesus Christ. And as you go to these confined areas, to there share the gospel Go in the grace and the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit to do his work and touch lives for him. God bless you as you go. In Jesus' name, God bless you.